Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Hope you are okay on that side of the screen. And today with the brand new released Kardash Vim 1S, which personally, in my opinion, comes really in a great price point for this kind of device, especially when we look at the competition and we see higher prices with sometimes lower specifications. Talking about specifications, if you are aware of the Xiaomi 4K TV or the Realme 4K TV, which we have reviewed here on the channel, in terms of the hardware is exactly the same with the exception that the Kadash Vim 1S has the double of the storage. It has 16 gigabytes of storage, unlike the other two that I mentioned, which only have eight. So this is just the simplest way to tell you what kind of hardware it is, is the AIMLogic S905 Y4 and two gigabytes of RAM. Now, one of the things that I do love on Kadash since the beginning is that they have been targeted the user to be as friendly as possible. And the latest device that we have seen is the Kadash Vim Quad, which is a beast. Eight gigabytes of RAM and 32 of storage with a beast of a CPU, which is one of the strongest on the market. Now, they had implemented the firmware, which is called Ooh, wow and this is a wow experience because if we want to install any operating system we just need to go through the menu and we can select at this moment Android and Linux and as usual I would not be surprised at all that in a few weeks in a few months you will have Android TV and other versions of Linux and so on and so forth because the community is very active and also the Kadash team is very active so this is one of my favorite things and although it's easy to download an image and then burn it to a micro sd and insert uh, i do believe that this is the easiest way talking about micro sd one of the important things that i should mention here so that you can see how simple it is to use a development board or a mini computer such as this is that the priority boot is micro sd and then the internal storage. So if I install Android on this microSD card, it means that if I insert the microSD, it will boot Android. And if I install Linux on the internal storage, when I remove the SD card, what happens is that it will boot to Linux. So I can have a dual operating system, uh, which I can select between Android and Linux in a really fast manner. And in the future, if we have more operating systems, or if I want different versions of Android, or if I want different installations of Android, then I just need another micro SD, and the one that I put there uh, will be the one that it will put. So this is as simple as it gets. And if I only want one, I will use the internal storage. In terms of experience on the Android, which was the first one that I did try, uh, it's just the awesome experience. Now, I found one limitation, which is on the Play Store, I did not find all the apps that I wanted. So between Play Store and Aptoids, I was happy to find everything that I wanted. So no issues whatsoever, but this was a limitation that I found. Once I did install and put it and customize the way that I wanted, I was able to start using an experience was really nice. I did try multimedia and by the way, we can play up to 4K at 60 Hertz. So I was not expecting any downside. And yes, you will play Netflix, Plex, Kodi, YouTube without any issues whatsoever. In terms of gaming, I also tested a few Asphalt, uh, for example, Asphalt 9, if I'm not mistaken, which is compatible with a gamepad. And what happens is that it played just fine. So great experience right over here. I also played another few games, but those are more oriented to be used on phones on and on tablets. So I had to use the mouse. And to finish up on Android, I also did some benchmarks so that we can put it on the database and then compare with all the others. In terms of Wi-Fi, we were getting roughly 200 megabits, which is really nice on download and 100 on uploads. Geekbench, the usual for this sock and Wildlife Extreme, the same. So really, really awesome. Now, having in mind that if I want to change from Android to Linux, it's really easy. That's what I did. I did install Linux, so if I want to use it as a regular computer, for example, for homework and whatnot, then here it is. If I want to use virtual machines to install Home Assistant or any other piece of software, then great. So this is it, guys. The first impression, the first touch is just awesome. I'm still impressed every time that I look at the firmware called Wow because although it's really simple, it's a simple idea, but it does a lot 
for the final user and that's a chance a awesome experience that being said hope that you guys enjoyed the video and if you did so don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there which is really appreciated on this side of the screen my name is roberto george and as always i'll see you guys on the next one